There we go. Okay. So welcome to the Promoting Progress for Struggling Students and Students with Disabilities and Private Schools Forum Breakout Session. Uh, the, this is the Progress Center Promoting Rigorous Outcomes and Growth by Redesigning Educational Services for Students with Disabilities. My name is Stephen Prater, and I'll be the facilitator for today's session. Uh, I will be joined by Chrissy Brown, who will not only address any technical issues, but also monitor the chat for questions. So please use the chat for any questions, comments, or reactions. Closed captioning is available. Uh, check on the, check, click on the CC on your toolbar if desired. Today's webinar will be recorded and posted on the center's website at www.promotingprogress.org. Uh, please remember to continue to add your responses to the Mentimeter question. The Mentimeter login has been shared in the chat by Chrissy, hopefully. Uh, we are pleased to introduce Dr. Gina Nelson, who is a Boise State University assistant professor. She'll be highlighting instructional practice briefs from the Progress Center to support the delivery of high quality educational programming. All right, go ahead. Dr. Hi, Nelson. everyone. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm Gina, and I, um, I'm at Boise State, and I um, teach a lot of courses in methodology and um, pedagogy for um, special education. Um, and I was um, involved in creating these resources that I'm going to share, and I'm going to share my screen here in a minute. Um, I had put together some other content, um, but since um, we're a little short on time, I'm just going to focus on what the, the materials are and then open it up for questions from people. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. And all right, so um, and I'll start here in the presentation. Um, is everyone able to see my screen and not my notes? Okay, hopefully everyone can see the full PowerPoint screen. Um, all right, so um, the, the resources that we developed for the Progress Center were based on um, evidence-based practices. So um, IDEA and the Every Student Succeeds Act um, emphasizes using practices with an evidence base with students with disabilities. And um, evidence-based practices are typically really narrow in focus compared to other high leverage practices or instructional strategies that um, teachers may use with students with disabilities. Um, and evidence-based practices are uh, vetted with very rigorous criteria um, and shown to be effective across multiple studies with different samples. <clears throat> Right. So based on um, our review of evidence-based practices, we um, came up with six evidence-based practices that are um, easily um, and can be efficiently implemented in classrooms with students with disabilities um, across any type of special education or general education setting and regardless of grade level or specific disability. <clears throat> So although there are six evidence-based practices that we um, use to create six different resources, I'm just gonna highlight three of them today. Um, and those include planning for instruction, delivering instruction, and reviewing and intensifying instruction. So on the progress website, um, you will, will be able to access these resources. And um, in or when we were creating the resources, we really um, wanted to emphasize the cycle of planning um, instruction and then delivering and reviewing and intensifying instruction throughout all of the, the different briefs that we created. Um, so these, with these evidence-based briefs, um, they're downloadable um, free resources on the Progress Center, and each brief um, just covers what teachers need to know about the specific practice. So what do they need to know about planning for instruction? Um, what do they need to know about instructional technology, for example? That's one of um, the other briefs. And then what do teachers um, need to keep in mind when planning and individualizing instruction uh, for students with disabilities in the classroom? And then how can teachers support access to general education classrooms for students with disabilities or students who maybe haven't been identified as having a disability but are struggling? Um, and then how teachers, um, some simple, simple tips for how teachers can get started with the practice. So um, with the planning for instruction, um, uh, brief, uh, we really focus on what teachers need to think about before they design and deliver high quality instruction for students with disabilities. Um, and with that brief, we um, focus on um, how teachers can set really meaningful learning targets for those students and then how teachers can determine the appropriate sequence for instruction, um, regardless of the content area that they're focused on. And then tips for setting clear learning object objectives for each lesson. <clears throat> 
All right, and on the delivering um, instruction brief, uh, we focus on what teachers need to think about as they deliver instruction. So what do we know about high quality um, instruction? And a lot of the information on this brief actually focuses on explicit instruction, which has um, a really rich evidence base for working with students with or at risk for disabilities. So some of the things that that brief covers um, include um, tips for how um, teachers can ask questions and the types of questions that they should be embedding and planning for in their instruction. Um, how teachers can plan for um, frequent responses and increasing students' opportunities to respond in the classroom. And then providing feedback. What does that look like for students? And then maintaining a brisk pace. And again, all of the briefs go into um, specific detail about these components. And just for time today with everything, I'll um, just be giving a very brief overview. Um, and then the third brief actually looks at the reviewing and intensifying instruction aspect of instruction for students with disabilities. So um, how can teachers use the data that they collect to determine um, instructional adaptations that may need to be made for students who are not meeting um, learning targets? And so this brief um, focuses on how teachers can use data, whether that's um, formative data that a teacher might um, be collecting on a daily basis throughout a lesson um, or more summative data, um, as well as progress monitoring data. So how can teachers enhance or increase intervention dosage? And it may not even just, it may not even be intervention, it might be instructional dosage. Um, and with dosage that comes, um, comes with group size. So how can teachers decrease group size um, to increase the amount of opportunities to respond that a, a student might have? Um, and so this brief also um, speaks to enhancing opportunities to respond in the classroom. And then alignment of um, content across uh, or within content areas, and then transfer of skills. Right. And so um, those are the first three briefs in the series that cover um, just really straightforward principles for um, teachers getting started in the classroom at, with planning, delivering, and reviewing instruction. And then there are three other briefs that focus on cognitive and metacognitive strategies that teachers can easily implement across content areas, um, teaching social behaviors, and instructional technology. And I would like to emphasize that although we have a separate brief on teaching social behaviors, all of the, the briefs um, um, planning for instruction, delivering instruction, reviewing cognitive, metacognitive, and instructional technology can be utilized across academics as well as um, behavioral settings. And so we have those other briefs available for um, teachers in schools. And then with those briefs, we also, we also have some additional resources coming soon um, that allow teachers to do a little bit um, deeper dive with the content. Um, so coming soon, there will be some self-paced modules focused on each practice. Um, the modules are engaging and um, they allow um, teachers to learn and then practice and apply uh, the content with um, follow-up tips for implementing it with colleagues in their school. And so, um, so one of the questions we've received is how can teachers use these briefs? So. Um, some things that teachers and administrators um, and support personnel can do with these briefs include um, using the briefs to identify and target professional development opportunities for teachers in, in schools um, this year. And then promoting the briefs in professional learning communities, grade level teams, or with new teachers as a way to um, structure and organize the conversations that teachers are having with one another. Um, and also um, using the briefs as a starting point to help teachers, whether that's um, a new teacher to the classroom or a veteran teacher, set professional goals for the school year. I think just like with our students um, setting goals, um, is a way for us to monitor our own progress. And when teachers can set uh, those professional goals for themselves for a school year, and then use um, the information in the briefs to work with colleagues and identify those points um, that they really wanna focus on, um, it allows them to monitor their own progress and engage in self-evaluation of their work. Um, so I, I know that that was a very, very brief and high level overview, but um, I'm gonna open it up for questions now about the briefs or um, other questions about how um, schools can, can start to use this content. And it looks like there's some links. Thanks, Chrissy. 
uh, to the, or is that link to the briefs? Oh, that's a different link, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering if we can actually put a link to the briefs in the chat, would that be possible? Let's see if we can find one. And if you have questions, you can put them in chat or you can unmute and, and uh, ask your question aloud also. And I guess as people are thinking of questions, um, some other questions we've received about the briefs are, do we have to do all of these at once? And the answer is definitely no. Um, this is a lot to take on. And um, what we would expect is that teachers kind of start small and start with those first um, three briefs and um, determine how they can um, use those um, high quality evidence-based practices in their instruction on a daily basis and then look for opportunities to bring in the other content uh, when it's appropriate. And um, all of the briefs are meant to um, serve teachers across different grade levels, um, preschool through 12th grade, across um, settings, including general education and special education settings, and regardless of um, disability category that may or may not be present in a classroom. Um, so there are really six evidence-based practices that have a lot of evidence, um, regardless of, of the students that you may be working with. I think that's what makes 